Welcome to Holy Spirit Catholic Community. Today we celebrate the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We greet those members of our parish who are participating with us from their homes through our live stream broadcast. We also welcome any newcomers and visitors who join us today. Our celebrant is Father Costance. We have a new website. It's beautiful and easy to use. Go to hscc.org and check it out. Join us for a special Mass of Healing with Bishop Peter this Thursday, October 29th at 7 p.m. here at St. Anthony's. Following the Mass, Bishop Peter will individually pray over those who desire his special blessing. Please arrive early to make time for our parish health and safety protocols. Masks are required. The Mass will be live streamed and a special blessing will be given by Bishop Peter to those participating from home. Again, that's this Thursday at 7 p.m. here at St. Anthony's Chapel. Daylight Savings Time ends next Sunday, November 1st. Please remember to set your clocks back one hour. Someone is once again sending out false emails in Father Henry's name. Please do not pay attention to them. Father Henry will never email you asking for anything for himself. Please pray that these hackers find other employment, find God, and send Father Henry a long overdue apology. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Dear brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I've deadly seen in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and what I failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask to bless Mary, every Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me tonight. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory, God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, 
we glorify you, give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not molest or oppress an alien. For you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong in a, any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner for him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception 
we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to await his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this Sunday, we are all invited to reflect on the fundamental principle on which the life of every disciple, of every follower of Christ, of every Christian is founded or is grounded to love, uh, to love God first and foremost before all else and to love our neighbors to love our fellow brothers and sisters as ourselves. Our faith is alive and active through the acts of love. As we heard, a scholar of the law asked Jesus about what the greatest commandment in the law is. And of course, the aim of this question was to trap him. As we heard, uh, when, the Pharisee ha had, when the Pharisees had that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, then the Pharisees, they, the Pharisees gathered and the scholar of the law uh, asked uh, this question. And of course, the Sadducees were defeated or were, uh, were silenced by Jesus because for them, they were asking about the, the issue of resurrection. For them, the Sadducees don't believe on the resurrection. So they also wanted to test Jesus on this issue of resurrection. And Jesus was able to overcome their trap. So today also, they are trying to trap him 
asking him about what is the greatest and the first commandment in the law. And as we know, at that time of Jesus, there were 613 laws. 613 laws. 365 of them were for prohibitions. Things that should not be done. You should not do this. You should not do this. You should not do this. And uh, 248 of them were for things to be done. You must do this. You must do this. You must do this. So they wanted Jesus to summarize all this into one sentence. And of course, it is said Jesus was not the first to be asked a question like this. There is a story told about someone also who was asked the question like this. Uh, and this person is a famous Jewish teacher, Hillel, and uh, someone asked him, I will be converted if you can teach me the whole or the entire law or the entire Torah while standing in one foot. Standing in one foot. So you can teach me all the 613 laws uh, while standing on, as I stand on one foot. Then Hillel responded by telling him, what is hateful to you, do not do to your brother or sister. And that is the whole law or the whole Torah. The rest is explanation and commentary on, on it. In the Sermon on the Mountain, Jesus say, uh, said something similar. In everything, treat, treat others as you would want them to treat you. For that is the law and the prophets. So the Pharisees, through the scholar of the law, wanted a summary of all these laws, of all these laws from Jesus. And Jesus answered by, uh, by quoting the book of De Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verses 5, which says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And this is the greatest and the first commandment. Now, loving God with all our heart, soul, and mind means that we should place God's will ahead of, of ours, seeking the will of God in all things. It means putting him first, respecting his name, and keeping his days. When I say keeping his days, it means Sundays and obligatory holidays. Then the second command, commandment comes from the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verses, uh, verse 18, which links the love of God with the love of neighbor. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Then he declared that the whole law and the prophets depend on the, on the commands to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and of course our neighbor as ourselves. My dear friends, the love of God and the love of neighbor are intimately connected. They cannot be separated. They are inseparable. Yes, our love is due first to God, but there is no genuine love for God unless it finds its expression in the love of neighbor, in the love of our fellow brothers and sisters. In fact, in the first letter of St. John, St. John said, if anyone says, I love God, but hates his, his brother. He is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen 
cannot love God whom he has not seen. Whoever loves God must also love his brother or sister. We can get this from the, the first letter of St. John, chapter 4, verses 20 to 21. So the best way of, of expressing our love for God is, is through our love uh, for our neighbors, our love for our, our fellow brothers and sisters. And if we have the love of God within us, it should, it should shine towards others. Love is meant to be shared, and our neighbor includes everyone. And if we break this commandment by not loving our neighbors as, as we love ourselves, then we do not love God. We may say that we love God, but in reality, we do not love God if we don't love our neighbor, if we don't love our fellow brothers and sisters. We express our love for our uh, for neighbor by meeting their needs, using the talents and the blessings that God has given us by comforting each other. We have to help each other, to support each other, to encourage each other, to forgive each other, and to pray for everyone. And that's the way we love our neighbor. That's the way we love our fellow brothers and sisters. In fact, Jesus frequently said, what you do to others, you do to me. If you give someone in need a cup, a, a cup of water, you are giving a cup of water to Jesus. If you feed the hungry, you are feeding Jesus. So if we love others, by our actions, it is a sign that we love God. So my dear friends, let us, let us reflect again about this simple call to love God and our neighbor with all that we are, with all that we are. You might be familiar, there is a famous pop group, the Beatles, in, 19, uh, 60, in 1967, they sang a very nice song. All you need is love. For sure, all we need is love. All we need in our family is love. All we need in our place of work is love. All we need as the church is love. All we need everywhere is love. I like that. I like that song. For sure, all we need is love. And if we love each other, if we put in, uh, this, new, uh, this commandment of love into practice, always the world will be a better place to live, a better place for everyone. There, there will be no chaos. There will be no violence. There will be no hatred. So my dear friends, we are called to love one another. And of course, St. Paul, uh, Paul's first letter to Corinthians, uh, chapter 13, uh, told us, love is always patient and kind. It is never boastful. It is never jealous. It is never rude or selfish. It does not take offense Love brings peace. Love brings joy. Love bring, uh, brings happiness. Love is everything. Agape love, the love of God, is everything. So my dear friends, today Jesus is calling each one of us to put this commandment of love into practice by loving him and by loving one another, by supporting each other by caring for each other. Where probably we have failed to put this uh, commandment of love into practice, Jesus is reminding us today to renew that commitment that from now on, if in my, if in my family there is no love, 
Now, today Jesus is reminding us that in my family, we should have, we should now put this new, uh, this commandment of love into practice. That we have to love each other and care for each other. The same thing when the places where we work. If there is no love, Jesus is reminding us today to put this commandment of love into practice even where we normally work. Even in the community, in our church, if maybe there is no love, Jesus today is calling each one of us, is calling us to renew that, uh, that commitment of loving God and loving one another. Let us pray asking for the grace of God that we may be able to do this, we may be able to put this commandment of love into practice. And with God, everything is possible. Amen. Please, may we now stand and we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. for the church and the world. For pastoral leaders and preachers, for dedicated liturgists and educators, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all candidates who desire to serve in our national and local government, may all seeking election commit themselves to the common good and encourage a peaceful response so that our nation may be faithful to its pledge of liberty and justice for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us yearning for the sacrament of the Eucharist during this time, that God may bless our hunger with an ever-increasing devotion and love of Christ that compels us to share that love with others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Deacon Scott, who will be celebrating his anniversary in the deaconate this week, that he will be blessed for many years to come. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of this assembly, for all their loved ones who have died, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and true God, you are our strength and our refuge. Hear the prayers of your people, which we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Please may we stand. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, 
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Set your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for good and good of all his church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O oh Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with, and so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of host, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and he entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and he gave it thanks, broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when his supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and a drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us. Save us of the word, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread it throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Peter our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Our lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory for forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that I should enter under my roof, but only so the word and my soul shall be. Amen. The body of Christ. 
the body of Christ. The Almighty God bless the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Participating in this Mass at home, let us now pray the spiritual act of communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
May, you, may your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what you will now celebrate in signs, we may, we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with may the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Thank you all, and I wish you a good day. Thank you.